Critical Analysis of Anchor by Angelina Lopez If I were to ask you to make a list of your top 10 worst ways to die, I'm fairly confident that drowning might be one of them. Not only is it a rational fear, but it is not the least likely of human demises. But while drowning in its literal sense refers to the inflooding of water into the lungs to the point of aqueous suffocation, one can figuratively drown as well. You can be drowned in work, in rage, love, or, according to this poem, anchor by suffocating loneliness made paradoxical by the numberless friends we interact with every day. The deafening sound of silence and the emptiness within the relationships that define human connection today are explored by this unassuming poem. I found this poem in Dawn of the Absent, which is a modern anthology of poetry and flash fiction. So first I'll read the poem and then we'll get into the analysis. Acker by Angelina Lopez To speak the truth, I let myself drown. After so many attempts, I decided to quit. Why try swimming? What is the point? There is no one out here. I'm all alone. Out of breath. No pulse in my veins. Body feels heavy. No feelings in my hands. Losing my senses. Getting blind. Ears are popped. My mouth is dry. All I know is, I'm about to die. But that last little feeling, feeling of hope, shines on my face, giving me warmth. The sun was shining down in the deep. Bring me light. That's all I needed. We'll get back to the title in a little while. But for now, Anchor throws us firmly into the scene of the deep blue. While anchors are used to make vessels sturdy and safe, they can also be hung around men's neck to ensure that when cast overboard, they drown. Now this duality will remain important throughout the poem. Something that is used to give us a sense of stability and safety is the very thing that ensures our demise. Social media, our solace and haven, is the very thing that causes us to self-hate and feed our own insecurities as we compare ourselves to the perfect lives of everyone else. The first two lines start with a conversational tone. To speak the truth. To speak the truth and to be honest are regular conversation fillers that both try to ensure credibility and make what is said more personal. But preceding your words with such phrases does stir the question of whether everything else that you said is a lie. Line two confirms the personalness with the first person singular, making us know that the speaker is talking about their own experiences. This idea of questionable truth and dubiousness runs right through social media. Think about fake news, even fake faces made possible by the infinitude of filters. And since news have become so wrapped up in social media, even news anchors, who we could once trust, are now a part of this dubiousness. Line 2 is difficult to believe, because who lets themselves drown? The incredulousness of this gives clear purpose to line 1. So here we have a speaker who has let herself drown. I say her even though there is no indication of gender. But when the poem leaves no hint of gender, I typically work with the gender of the poet to avoid the awkward they throughout the analysis. Anyway, there is an ambiguity in these two lines that is easy to miss. These lines could also read, in order to speak the truth, I let myself drown. So the price of telling the truth was drowning. Let us look at how this makes sense in the real world. Drowning aside, there are countless accounts throughout history, and especially in the Bible, of good men being killed for the sake of truth and righteousness. Today in the world of social media, we might not be crucified or beheaded for speaking an unpopular truth but we may in fact be drowned by the hate and despise of the masses. Even though the speaker let herself drown, it was not before first doing all she could to keep her head above water. It is only after so many attempts in line 3 that she decided to quit line 4. She rationalizes her resignation with two rhetorical questions. Why try swimming? What's the point? And if you imagine being cast out and left to die in the deep blue, especially with an anchor around your neck, giving up does not seem like such a crazy idea. 
Finally, in the last two lines, we understand clearly what this drowning is all about. It is loneliness. Even in the sea of statistical friends and lively emojis, she's alone. The next three lines describe the deadness of the speaker. No breath, no pulse. However, the fact that she does feel the weight of her body means she's still alive. So has she drowned or is she drowning? It could be that this drowning is not the singular event of life's end, but rather a continuous death, a recurring absence of life. A daily emptiness that we consume each time we become absorbed in the alternate reality of the virtual sphere. The more friends we connect with, the more likes and comments we get, the lonelier we become, and the more awkward and disconnected our real-world existence feels. The more time we spend on social media, the less time we have to maintain or cultivate real friendships, and so the more alone we become. How curious that at the point of drowning, the speaker pays attention to the numbness in her hands, making it seem as important as the absence of a pulse or breath, both prior mentioned. The fact is, the numbness in her hands is another hint that this loneliness is caused or at least exacerbated by an addiction to social media. Have you ever been on your phone for so long that your hand became numb? Not only that, but your eyes may also begin to hurt and you may also feel yourself becoming blind. The next two lines make reference to that. Next are two interesting sensations. Ears are popped and mouth is dry. This feeling that your ears need to pop is called barotrauma and usually happens when a person increases their altitude. There are many things way up high, but one thing that isn't there is the deep blue sea, which is where we have thus far imagined our persona to be submerged in. And then we have the dry mouth, another sign that this drowning has nothing at all to do with water. Now let's dissect. Just as drowning is not caused by the presence of water, but instead by an absence of oxygen, this loneliness is not caused by the existence of social media, but by the displacement of real communication. Water is good until it replaces air. Social media is good until it replaces real life. The ears are popped because of a lack of anything but air to listen to. The mouth is dry because it is not being used to speak. In other words, the speaker's loneliness stems from the absence of anyone to listen to or speak to in real life. And while the speaker knows that they're about to die, or well, they're continuing to die, the last three stanzas offer a sense of hope. We have the sun shining down in the deep blue sea. And so even in the midst of this fakery and loneliness, real connections are possible. Studies show that since about 2017, about 40% of couples who end up married actually met online. The deep blue sea is here to stay, but it has not swallowed up all the light there is. We have adapted at least somewhat to this new world, and we are beginning to find each other here. Here, down in the deep blue. And by the way, Anchor is not the only great poem in this anthology. If you want to check it out, the link is below. Well, as always, Thanks for watching.